It's another really nice uh, January day here in Kansas. to um this is the field that we had the uh, grazing heifers on on these milo stalks we're going to uh wind up that uh, uh hot wire fence today uh, part of the field was uh barbed wire so it's just about um the mainly the um mainly the west end and a little bit on each edge that that is a hot wire so it won't take too long but i do have to get this tractor uh, we didn't need to bring over a tractor since we have these. These two tractors over here, so we didn't need to bring over a different uh, rig to wind up the wire. But uh, this one, the M7 has the um, it has the 1000 um, PTO on it instead of the 540. So I'm going to take that off real quick, put on the 540, so that'll run our wire winder. That's all we need. And then buzz these right off. I found the size that it is, so. Oh, that's easy. We had to switch this to run the grain cart, and it's also run the um, feed wagon. Both those things have been run by this PTO, but now we're switching the other one to wind up some wire. So that's the last one. I will say this, that's pretty simple. It's a, I mean, there's eight of those to change. The clips are really annoying. This is really simple. There's just a lot of small things you gotta keep track of instead of a clip. So every tractor is a little bit different. All right, last one. All right, now I just gotta grab the wire winder. Anybody else to use, uh, make storage deals like this? We'll see if I can get my tailgate one-handed today. Oh, it worked. Usually I have to kind of bang on it to get it open. All right, well, I brought over this one. If the wire is high tensile, and I brought over this one if it's kind of smooth wire. So if you put high tensile stuff on here, it gets real wound up real tight. So, and then there's the winder. I, I cleaned out the back of my truck bed right before Christmas. Look how clean it still is. All right, stuck that on there. Got to lower down this three point hitch. So where those go on the three-point hitch, and then this is the part that spins from the PTO. Um, might wait to finish up that. Um, Greg's actually coming over to help me pull up posts. So that has to be done before you wind the wire anyway. Okay, so that, for some reason that one didn't fit. Uh, this was actually, that hole didn't line up with that hole, so this comes out of this tractor a little bit further, so there wasn't enough space. So we're going to have to use this one for now, but it fits. Look here, we got some bale storage and the two eight row head. One's a corn head, one's a row head. Can anybody tell the difference? Which one's corn and which one's row head? All right. Oil come up on this hill. So this side is where we started feeding the cattle using these bunks here and now they're all across the road up on that hill you see them okay now we got this parked to where we need it i'll grab the pickup and we'll be ready to pick up posts pick up picking up posts hey we should really run a poll some people call pickups pickups and some people call them trucks um uh, i was on team i called i called a vehicle like that a truck for a long time but now I think I'm a little bit more likely to call it my pickup because we have we have semis that we also call trucks and we have tandem trucks that we also call trucks. So I am kind of starting to call things pickups instead, but curious what you guys call them out there. Just, uh, oh yeah, just kidding. It's not hot. Uh, so this is smooth wire. So I'm gonna wind it on that, wind it on that empty spool uh, since it's smooth wire. So, those ones are a lot easier to pull than these ones. But, uh, it was really dry when we post when we pounded all these in. We actually had to use hammers. 
We would use hammers to put in these ones, which we usually can just push them in with our feet or our hands. If you hear someone else talking, it is. Uh, if you hear someone else talking, it is this podcast that I'm listening to. VCI Cattle Chat, put on by K-State University. So I listen to podcasts oftentimes while I'm doing a job where there's not any other sound. Or if I'm in a tractor and have a radio. All right. Uh, oh, this one's stuck in there pretty good. All right. There's three. So... We looked at this fence and we thought, oh, you know, four wires, it would possibly keep the heifers in before we decided to set up the hot wire, but there is some terrible gaps in it. So we ended up having to put up a whole hot wire. Man, I'm gonna have half this field done before Greg. Greg is out here. I'm a long ways from my pickup. I thought he might be here and then drive up to me and pick me up but all right we made it to the end it's tied on to this post and greg made it here before me he detached it and so we got all the posts dumped off there's just one t post and all these greg made it he was he helped with he helped with over half of it we'll call it over half i was emailing oh but we were technically not over half done because we've got to wind the wires. So that's a two person job too. Also, I wanted to see how much lower they, they drank the pond while they were here. Pretty good. They probably drank it probably two feet down while they were here. All right, we took the road back across the field and we're back to the beginning to wind up. Okay, Greg crawled up in there. He's gonna see whether this is winding pulling the right way because if it's not pulling the right way we'll have to swing it around on the other side okay the other thing i forgot to do was greg moved that lever there from a thousand to 540 so that should slow it down just a little bit otherwise that was gonna it was kind of a, a little fast and dangerous yeah that's a lot better all right i got the two wires tied together and uh once we turn the PTO on, it'll start pulling. We'll just pull from one end all the way to the other, keeping it as tight as we can the whole time. Alright, we got the wire wound up. Uh, we weren't able to film it. There's too much going on. and uh, So you probably saw a little from the time lapse, but there's the wire over there. And uh, finish it up. I'm just going to put this back in the pickup because we have another wire to wind up at a different field. So we're going to use a different tractor. Uh, and I don't know if we'll get to that by the end of this week, but we might. All right, Greg is off to feed over here at this feed lot for the night. It's a little on the early side, but while we're over here, he's just gonna feed. I'm gonna head back to my parents' house and unload these posts. Um, so they'll be ready to use probably next fall is when we'll use these posts and this wire again. I always kind of keep a list of things. We have the list that's written down of all the things everyone knows need to be done in a week with priorities, one, two, and three. So the number one is a priority that needs to be done most. And then some things are like a three, which, you know, you just hope you get them done by the end of the winter. Um, but some things that need to be done by the end of this week are haul some straw over to this feed lot and then uh, move some prairie hay bales. Also, there is some more welding that needs to be done. Uh, there's one panel that the a steer pen is really messed up and a, um, another part of the pen that needs to be kind of beefed up and then um we got some more calves coming tomorrow and then there's a cow sale on tuesday of this week so i'm either going to get some bread heifers or some cows depending on prices uh, we're gonna we're gonna um put about 
15 or 20 more head in the spring herd just to uh, have the, kind of the right amount to fill a pasture uh, so we can utilize the grass a little more efficiently. So there's actually two of our heifer calves are up here in this pen. Um, they all got mixed in by size. So the bigger calves, some of them have already sold. Uh, the two biggest heifer calves have already sold and the rest are separated off into different pens. There's the pretty view over the Smoky Valley driving home. Our neighbors to the north here, they ripped out their whole barbed wire fence and I'm guessing they're gonna put in the new one by come next spring when it's time for grazing again. It wasn't in the worst of shape, but they must have known there was some bad spots, so they must have thought it was worth redoing the whole thing. Stop in to see uh, if my dad and Nathan made any progress. They actually, they took the starter out of this tractor. Um, it's gotta get, I think, rebuilt. It was wearing out and then it was kind of shutting off. So it's kind of an electronic problem, but also the starter problem. So hopefully we can get that fixed. But beans that we just sold a loader tractor, the bi-directional, um, and then that tractor's down. Um, it creates, puts us in kind of a tight spot at the moment because if one of the loader tractors at either feeding location is out, uh, we got to work to get it going because that's what we have to feed the cattle. We don't have any extras laying around. So I think I just heard something fall off the back of my pickup, which might be something because I don't have my end yet. Yep. Awesome. Hopefully only one. But just going to run those up to the home place farm and unload them instead of here. Nobody else, Nathan and Dad, were both gone from here. So in the next field we wind up wire will be this one. It's got a double wire around part of it, so it'll be a lot of wire. Um, we are done grazing that. It's going to be beans next spring, so it'll have some uh, cattle manure on it and uh, all that residue. Well, there's not too much residue left from the grazed cover crop, but. Uh, there'll be some nutrients in the ground for sure, and it'll be make a good bean field next year. What are you trying to get to? That square mail. Does somebody want it? I saw it. Hey, that thing's been sitting in our little bale storage area for a while. Nathan wins the award for most time spent on big iron in the winter uh, from our farm, so he's been he's been trying to trade all the stuff we have randomly sitting around and getting rid of it and then um using spare change to buy other stuff so oh here we go this might be there is one of the things he found uh and we we went down there to southeast kansas to pick up that fertilizer cart so we've been moving wheeling and dealing a little bit trying to make the farm ready for the spring ready for the growing season now i gotta put the wire winder away so next time we're looking for it it's where we usually keep it. You think this is a game? Messing up my fence? So whenever we get cattle, we kind of sort them by how well they're eating. And then um, once they get on feed, after like 40 days, we'll sort them on heifers and steers and by the size of them. But that will all be in our feeding video that's coming soon. The third, the third feeding. 